And it is my understanding that my focus ought to be future looking to the Bahamas that I would wish to see realized. Um, I said before that I was very, very uh, impressed and pleased with the theme of this year's uh, seminar, which is a decade of action and accountability. In the spirit of that theme, my focus is politics. Not so much um, party politics and who will win the by-election, <laughs> but, but more so, um, I should say, not even so much politics as governance in our country and uh, the, the role that politics plays in, in governance. Um, what I want to do is talk about the Bahamas I, I would like to see come into being from a standpoint of political governance in our country. I, I preface my remarks by quoting just briefly some words from a report that was produced by the Canadian Foundation for the Americas at the end of a conference that they conducted in March of 2006. It was called Civil Society and the Promotion and Strengthening of Democracy in the Americas, a Vision for the Future. And it, I have just lifted three brief segments from that report. And the Canadian Foundation for the Americas, of course, is an organization um, which brings all of the nations of the Caribbean, Latin America, and North America together to talk about key issues. And the report said the following. Institutions central to the exercise of democracy in the Americas, we could fill in, continue to be weak, lack transparency, and suffer from low credibility. The management of social demands is largely inefficient, and myriad social problems persist despite economic growth. Large segments of the citizenry remain alienated from decision making, often the purview of a small elite. The report goes on to read, despite regularly exercising the vote, citizens' concerns are often not reflected on their or their rights protected by elected officials in policy making and governance decisions. The state's failure to respond to citizens' needs despite economic growth has created disillusionment with democracy. And finally, and you can let me know if this sounds familiar to you as Bahamians. Political parties are indispensable to the workings of, of democratic governance, which relies on them to fulfill the classic rules of recruiting candidates for political office, structuring public political support around identifiable sets of policy programs, socioeconomic interests and values, and forming government and legislative policy agreements. Unfortunately, Political parties throughout the region are in crisis. A weak democratic culture and the, com and the competition for the benefits associated with the state have contributed to their failure to effectively articulate coherent positions and respond to popular interests. Parties are charged often correctly with corruption, lack of transparency, weak internal party democracy, clientelistic practices, and the incapacity to promote new leaders. Those are not Ian Strawn's words. That comes from the Canadian Foundation for the Americas conference report. As I sat and thought about my Bahamas, the future Bahamas I'd like to see, I came up with 15 quick and easy, well, I shouldn't say easy because they're not easy, um, 15 things I, I would like to see in terms of political governance, in terms of change over the next decade. Will they happen in the next decade? I, I don't know. Some of them, well, none of them in my view are radical. None of them in my view are out of the realm of possibility and they can be seen in countries throughout this hemisphere and around the world. The first is fixed election dates. People are laughing already, okay? I don't know how to read that. But fixed election, <laughs> fixed election dates. 
Second, full-time members of parliament and members of the Senate. The third, term limits that are actually instituted in law for prime ministers, members of parliament, and senators. Fourth, republic status. Um, this is a matter of controversy for some. Trinidad has done it. Um, obviously, others. I think we. I think there's the appetite for it. I think it can happen. And this follows directly onto the Bahamas becoming a republic, and that is separate executive and legislative elections. I'll just repeat that one: Secretive, separate executive and legislative elections. In other words, we elect the head of state separate from the members of parliament or the senate. Sixth, some form of proportional representation. What we currently have now is a system in which a party can get 45% of the vote, there can be 40 seats in the house, and that party only occupies five or six of those seats. That's because we lack proportional representation, and we have a first past the post system. I don't think that serves democracy well. Um, I think senators should be elected. That's my seventh point. <laughs> right now, I don't see what, what purpose they serve other than as an election reward. No, uh, uh, no, as a consolation prize for those who do not win and as a backdoor way of, of introducing cabinet ministers. Um, I did want to do this after you ate your meal. Number eight, I think that in my future Bahamas, we have a primary process. We have a process by which candidates are selected by registered voters in constituencies, not by permanent party delegates. And debates are mandatory for uh, you to gain candidacy. So we have pri a primary process like for instance, like we're about to have a by-election, we, we would have debates, we'd have a primary. Who should be the FNM candidate, the PLP candidate, et cetera? That ought to be chosen by the registered voters of Elizabeth. <laughs> Unlikely. I, again, I hear laughter. I need to know what that means. Anyway. Nine. I, I think in the future of Bahamas, a recall Midterm recall would be welcomed by the Bahamian people. <laughs> Applause? Is that agreement? Okay. <laughs> um, ten, I'd like to have a future Bahamas in which there is, in fact, a mayor of Nassau, the city of Nassau, and local government in Nassau. Um, an independent boundaries commission. I, I realize there was an attempt to do that. Um, I think there was a, that was a part of the referendum that was rejected by everybody for reasons I'll come to a little bit later. Um, Twelve, I believe that we ought to have a more transparent process in terms of the appointment of members of the judiciary, directors of ministries, permanent secretaries, police commissioners, commodores, superintendents of prisons. There needs to be more of a democratic process in terms of how people in such key positions are appointed. More disclosure, more transparency. Campaign finance reform is something I believe ought to happen and can happen in the future. I don't think non-Bahamians should be able to contribute to Bahamian elections. I think there should be a limit on how much is spent in a constituency election. And there are models um, where that can be instituted. I am told there is no conflict of interest legislation to control members of parliament holding government contracts, renting buildings to government, etc. I don't know how that's possible at this stage of our country's history, but apparently there is no such, there are no such rules. And um, finally, the much talked about yet impossible to see Freedom of Information Act. Now, that's my wish list. The question is, why isn't this happening? Or why hasn't it happened? And I'd like to divide that into just two parts. First, I'd like to look at the electorate 